Hello friends, welcome back to another video. If you're new and not subscribed, I'm Kayla Bame and you should really think about subscribing to my channel because the bestest, most greatest things in the world happen when you do that. So, subscribe. For today's video, I am going to be doing a reverse glass painting art again. So for this glass painting, I am going to be doing flowers that are in a mason jar, and you'll never guess who I'm going to be doing it for. Mother's Day is like a few weeks away, okay? So I thought since my mom, KB Creations, crafter on the budget, rustic queen, is my mom, that I would give her a handmade, crafted glass painting of some rustic mason jar wildflowers. So here is the glass painting I did for my mom, KB Creations. Okay, party people, starting off this glass painting, there were words in the reference picture and it said, you belong among the wildflowers. I didn't really like that saying, so I decided to print up my own saying for my mom, and this is going to say, The Crafted Life. And I'm going to be tracing these words first before I outline anything else, before I even tape the glass down, because I am going to use the words as a reference point, I guess, of where I want them to sit inside the mason jar, if that makes any sense at all. Also, when doing words, remember to flip the image or reverse the image so it looks backwards like this. It is really weird tracing words backwards, but you need to do this so when you flip the glass over, it actually makes sense and people can read what you meant to write. See, just like this, even though it looked like I was tracing a bunch of nonsense, I flipped the glass over and it says, The Crafted Life. Then, after I did the little words, I placed them where I wanted them inside the mason jar and I taped that bad boy down to start tracing the rest of the picture. And the pens that I'm using to outline my picture are the oil-based paint pens by Craftsmart. The one that is all black is the ultra fine tip and then I ended up pulling out the regular fine tip as well because in this reference picture some of the lines looked a little bit thicker so I was just doing a cross between my ultra fine tip and my fine tip pen. And for this ultra fine tip marker, I will say these are the type of paint pens that you have to push down on the tip to get the ink out of them. So sometimes if you push too hard down on the tip, ink will spill out. So I usually just tap it a little bit on a napkin before I actually do it on the glass painting because it's a mess when ink spills out all over your beautiful glass painting. And if you mess up on the outlines, I take my little scoring needle thing. It's totally not what it was meant for, but that's what I use it for. And I clean up the lines with that. You can also use a Q-tip and acetone. I'm pretty sure you can use rubbing alcohol. That'll take acrylic paint or the paint from the paint pen off. You can use toothpicks, paper clips. These are all things that I use when I mess up during the outlining phase. A general rule of thumb when doing these paintings, always do a second coat for everything. The outline needs a second coat. The paint always needs a second coat. You, it may look like you don't need the second coat, but when you flip the glass over, sometimes it's not evenly spread out, or it looks like it's a nice thick coat on this side, and then you flip it over and it's not, or the ink didn't spread out all the way through the line. Just always do a second coat. 
always because almost always you need a second coat and you just don't realize it until the painting's done which you don't want okay moving on to the painting the color that i am using first is burnt umber and i mixed this color with a little bit of the titanium white and i'm just going to be using this as the shading for the sunflowers the middle of the sunflowers this is the shading color that i used and if you're new to glass painting yes this is the order you need to do it in everything about these paintings is backwards so if you're new to glass painting always do the shading and the highlights first and then go back for your base coat last because when you flip it around it's gonna look great and then for the color of the sunflowers i used naples yellow lemon yellow and some more titanium white and I mixed all three of these colors together to get this pale yellow color for the highlights of the sunflowers. I was just doing this project a flower at a time, I guess. So I started with the sunflowers first, and then I moved on to that big flower up top, and then the flower at the bottom. That was just the easiest way for me to do it, since the sunflowers obviously had the same colors. So that's the strategy I took when doing this project. And since I had the yellow already mixed, I noticed that this flower had a bit of yellow highlights in it as well. So since that brush was already coated with yellow, I decided I would add some of the yellow highlights to this flower. Then I took some burnt umber from before and mixed it with titanium white to get a lighter shade of brown for the darker brown shades in the sunflower and then i guess it would be considered a highlight in the middle of the flower that's the color i used though and honestly my strategy for mixing the paint colors like this yellow is supposed to be the darker shade in the sunflower i was just using colors i had previously mixed and started adding either more brown to make it darker or adding more of the titanium white to make it lighter. I don't know if that's how you're supposed to mix colors, but that was that's what I did for almost every single one of these colors. And for the leaves, I am using light green as well as deep green because in the reference picture, not all of the leaves is that what they're called on a flower the leaves that doesn't sound right what is it called i think they're leaves the leaves were a mix of light green and the dark green so those were the colors that i used for the leaves and i know i keep jumping around doing different parts of the painting but that's just because i was trying to get certain layers done and then letting them dry so I didn't have to get up as much to get the little blow dryer ray gun thing to dry off the painting so that's why I keep moving from like the sunflowers to the leaves to other flowers because I just wanted to give the previous layers time to dry or give myself time to sit in the chair so I didn't have to get up as much. <laughs> And for the other flower, I was using light pink and orange, and I'm pretty sure, I don't know why I didn't show it, but this color right here, I think it was labeled light magenta, and I added just a little bit more white to get a more baby pink. I really enjoyed doing this flower because it had so many pretty pastel colors. It was so much fun to do. And for this color, this was the light pink. I don't even think I had to add anything to it. That was, that's what I thought was weird. This color was called light pink, but it looked almost like a pastel orange. I don't know if all light pinks look like that. If that's just the paint color. I'm horrible at mixing paint, so I wouldn't know. But this light pink looked like a super light orange. So they called this pink. I'm calling this pastel orange. And this color right here, I'm pretty sure, was just the light magenta all on its own. Um, I wasn't really using the reference picture. As you can see, it's not in the back of my glass. I wasn't really using the reference picture 
to do all these shading and highlights because looking at the reference picture it was all kind of just blobbed together anyway so that's what i was doing i was just blobbing together all these pretty pastel colors and for these little flowers i don't know the names of any of these flowers except for the sunflower i know what an orchid is but that's about it for these little flowers here, I did a orange mixed with the light pink, and then I did some orange mixed with red for darker shades of orange. And these last three flowers all had very similar orange tones in them, so I was just reusing a lot of the same paint for the last bits of these flowers. And this flower was also kind of fun to do. What kind of flower is this? A pansy or something like that? Uh, this flower was fun to do because the layers, they kind of had to be a little bit curvy and not so straight and even just to make it look like there was more layers to the flower. I don't really know why I liked doing this flower so much. It could have just been the orange and red colors, but I, I enjoyed doing this flower too. It was fun. And for the water inside the glass, I am using light blue mixed with a whole bunch of titanium white again because you couldn't really see the water inside the reference picture. It looked very transparent, but I didn't want to leave it transparent like that. So I just did a very light shade of blue. And for the, I guess the upper layer of the water, like the surface water, I made just a little bit darker. So I didn't add as much titanium white because I wanted to have a little bit more contrast there. Because I'm a professional artist, I know what that means. Contrast colors. Do I sound professional? Then I took some aqua green, and I'm not entirely sure what I thought I was doing here. I kind of wanted to make like a glare on the glass. I'm not sure if I quite accomplished that, but what I was trying to do was make a glare in the glass, so I used this aqua green mixed with some more titanium white. And are you ready for the long-awaited reveal? Oh boy, KB Creations Mother's Day glass painting. Here it is, guys. Wow, look at those wild farmhouse flowers. I actually really like the way this turned out. Um, these flowers are super cute. The only thing I'm not too happy with is my attempt at a glare inside the mason jar, but even then, I think this came out really good, and I hope KB Creations likes it. Here are some pictures of what the back and then when it looks like flipped over. And here are some nicer pictures after it was dried and in its frame. And um, if you want one of these, I have an Etsy shop for custom glass paintings. So the link to my Etsy shop will be in the description down below. All right, that is it for today's video. If you liked it, be sure to give it a thumbs up and leave in the comments down below what you thought of this Mother's Day glass painting that I did for my mom, the one, the only, Kelly Barlow Creations. <laughs> um, we're gonna think of this as like an early Mother's Day present because she probably watched this video, but that's okay. It's the thought that counts, right people? <laughs> but I'll see you guys back here next time. Peace.